Greetings guitar lovers uh, all over the world, wherever you may be. And uh, I'm very excited to bring you another Tara Firma guitar video today. And uh, it's a massive shootout with four guitars. And uh, featuring a friend of mine, Chris, who lives in Hornsby, just uh, near Taramara here in Sydney. And he came, um, what I've done is if you don't have much time, I've just done the four guitars back to back. Uh, but if you want to stay and listen longer, uh, Chris and I have a long chat about humidity, uh, which is a pet subject. If you can hear it in the background, it's raining again, uh, and, uh, and the air is very humid. Uh, we also talk about brake angles, bridge heights, and a whole lot of things, and body depths as well. So uh, I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Chris here and he's come over and we're going to do some guitar comparison because we've got the whole heap of guitars here. But I just thought this would be really important. And yep, it's, it's Chris. Hi there, hi so everyone. <laughs> it's called a, a Pingy or Zarpax is the other name brand that sells these. I recommend the 150 gram bags. You can find them on eBay, Amazon or just a Google search. Um, the penguin's green when it's dry um, and it turns pink when it's saturated. You just throw them in the microwave for a couple of minutes and it dries it out. Keep them in your guitar case. It stops your guitar from getting all mushy and, and the wood swelling up and the action going terrible. I swear by these. They're um, awesome. And you know, this has been the big theme of, uh, of the Tara Firma Guitar Channel is that being in Sydney, the, the humidity doesn't get below 60 usually. Yeah. And so that is a bit too wet for a guitar to be happy. And so we get what we call the neck lifting issues, which is in fact a whole combination of the bridge bellying and the whole body folding in on itself and the, effectively the action goes up. So yeah, and one, yeah. la one last thing, you'll see recommendations, well, how much desiccant to put in your case. Mm -hmm. If you live in Sydney, you can never have too much in there. I've, I've got a hygrometer in my case, which even with this in the case, it never dipped below 50% inside my case, even when it was 80% humidity outside. Oh, okay, so it doesn't so dry it out too much. Not, not unless you're already in a dry climate. Mm. If you were in a dry climate already, I wouldn't put this in your case. But if you're in a climate where you're 50% or above average humidity, yeah, you can just, this can live in your case and just check it every couple of months and microwave it to dry it out. And you'll, you'll notice how good your guitars are, how happy they are. So what we've got here is the, um, the master built, um, frontier. Yeah. So, and, and you were telling me, Chris, it, it, what you really like about this is it's got the maple. Yeah, that's right. It's not a flame maple. It's like a bird's eye or a figured maple, but right. it's all solid maple nonetheless. Right. And yeah. Sitka spruce top. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And then, and you mentioned you've got this pinless bridge doctor. Yep. Yep. It's yeah. actually, you, or the pin, the one that uses a pin. Oh, I could um, just it, use a pin. Sorry. Just, yeah. yeah. Just, it fastens the bridge doctor, um, using a special a pin, pin yeah. there. And that just keeps your action set. Some people don't like the bridge doctors. Mm. I myself can't live without them because mm -hmm. Of Sydney's humid climate, it just keeps the guitar from bowing up out of control. Yeah, it's just inside here, mm -hmm. just sitting directly below that bridge, and and basically there's then there's a rod that runs that runs from inside the guitar from the bridge to the tailpiece, and it just pushes a little pressure against that to stop the strings, the two hundred pounds of pressure pulling that that top up and bowing the top. Yeah, bellying the top forward and the whole yeah. thing folding in on itself. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, and I, I, and you mentioned before, Chris, that you put them in almost preemptively, right? So yeah. before the guitar has an issue, you just. Yeah. But your point is, if the guitar's really stable, you put the bridge doctor in. The pressure's not that great on it; it's just holding great. everything in place. So it's 
starts to resonate just as it should anyway, right? Yeah, it takes it takes about two to four weeks, and then it, it, after a couple of weeks, it, it it relaxes a bit, and and the impact on tone is almost imperceptible. And it's for me, it's a trade off. I'd rather have a tiny bit of, of loss of resonance, and the trade off is you have a guitar you can keep your lifetime without having to take for a neck reset to a luthier. And yeah, for me, that's gold. Yeah, and it's very apropos of all the stuff I've been talking about um, in my previous videos, which is the neck lift. Well, we call it neck lifting, right? But it's it's also it's a combination of the body sort of folding yeah, up because the guitars are too wet. Okay. So the other thing is about body depth. My other pet subject. This is a full body depth. It's as, it's as big as my E10D uh, Dreadnought, the the Eastman. So yes, it's a full body size, and it's a twenty five point five scale. So it's a full size guitar. This is not the USA built Frontier, this is the FT-110 Epiphone Frontier Master built and they, they, they run around 1500 Australian um, if, if you can get one. <laughs> and made in Indonesia. So yeah, not China either, so they're, they're moving, yeah. they've got this thing happening in Indonesia. Yeah. But look, my observation, it's got a bound neck, it looks really well put together, it's, yeah. it's, it's clean and uh, yeah, the yeah. Tim and also the, the, the the timber on the, uh, the the fretboard is really pretty, um, and the inlays, yeah. It's Indian laurel with real pearl inlays, lip lock inlay, I think they call it. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, that's no, a very very nice looking guitar with the sunburst. So yeah, and also it looks like the um, it's got gold uh, sort of tulip. Yep. Tuners, they look very nice. The other thing too, just because this is a shootout, right, we're going to play some other guitars, I'll do the same chords. The strings um, that, that Chris uses here are, are quite a light gauge. They're um, Ernie Ball Earthwood Phosphor Bronze 10 to 54s, um, and it, that's on the Epiphone Frontier uh, Master Built and on the Epiphone slash J45, which you're about to see as well. Yeah, so so to be honest, it doesn't feel that ten doesn't feel a lot different to the the twelve. I use the twelve to fifty three, and then that fifty is quite relatively big for the the ten on the top. So it's I guess it's a bottom heavy. Yeah, so that's what you're hearing, and it's ringing. Okay, and so this is the old. Uh, the old favourite here, the Eastman E3DE, which is my daily driver, and it's got the Avant Corps. The other thing, um, the other one that Chris brought over, which was lovely to see, and I've been reading about this, it's the Epiphone Slash. It's and a, it's, it's a, a variant of the um, inspired by Gibson Epiphone J45. The main difference being it has um, a tusk um, saddle um, and a tusk nut down here on the mm -hmm. headstock. So it's yeah, a, it's, yeah, here. here we go, yeah. black tusk nut, and it's also got genuine Grover Rotomatic tuners. Yeah, so, and, and they've got the chunky sort of, yeah, the chunky yeah. body on them, those, yeah, the Grovers, yeah. Okay, yeah, I see. And this one is also made in Indonesia. Yep, the yeah. same factory in the yeah. Samic factory mm -hmm. in Indonesia. And this is where these Gibsons have been coming out, or the earphones that they're just really impressed, impressing everyone, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's getting great reviews. I'll just do my strum. This one as well has the um, the short scale 24, yep, 20, 24.75. Yep. Correct. And it feels like in a way, like I'm, I'm hammering away on the G chords, but it's not it's not a fight it wants to get into. You know what I mean about being the loudest, you know, heaviest hitting guitar. 
Yeah, that's right. It may not have as much as much depth as the, the, the real J45, but it's, what it's got is nice. Yeah, I'm almost getting into like this softer. Yeah, it's not as loud as the uh, as the Eastman, but I'm already sort of feeling the charm of it. But uh, the other point um, that that um, that you made about this is it's new, and the bridge doctor hasn't been in for long, right? Right. So um, it's two two weeks. So only yeah. two weeks. Yeah. So you know you've got to give them a chance to open up. Um, yeah. And so it's got the shorter scale. And look, this is the other thing I've been talking about a lot um, on my channel, and that is we we've got a perfect match here, which is the the uh, E3D. And this Gibson, uh, J45, are exactly the same body depth. Well, this is the Epiphone, but it is oh, made, made by Gibson, so you're not, you're not far off. It's not the Gibson, <laughs> yes, it's, it's the Epiphone Gibson, yeah. So there you go. So we've discovered that there is this, there must be this body size, which is about a quarter of an inch uh, shallower, uh, it seems like in the upper and lower bout. And um, so that's, that's uh, a match there. Whereas the other two, as we showed you, were, the foot, were, were deeper. <laughs> So to my ear, it, it lacks a bit of the power, and it sounds a little bit thinner at the top, but I think also that's because of the strings. You've got the lighter gauge up there. But, um, you know, it's uh, probably an optimal saddle height um, and optimal, op optimal action. And, and Chris and I have been talking about We met three years ago, and um, we've both been tinkering with our guitars in that time. And so these are Im impeccably <laughs> set up, and, uh, yeah, the actions are really, really nice. So... Okay. Yeah, I like that one when I pick that up. Yeah. <laughs> it's a time. Yeah. It's a favourite. And then yeah. there was the one I've had, this is my, my old rubber guitar. I've had it for about 15 years and it's the Eastman E10D. And so you were talking about that body depth. So that and the, the Epiphone um, square shoulder, yep. they, they all have the same big body, the full depth. So, and I think you hear it. And I've said this before, this guy's this old and it's, it's got a kind of a real mid range kind of, and someone said a compressed kind of sound. But it's, yeah, they're, they're cannons and, and yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah, as, as you mentioned, this the, one, the, the Eastman E10D and the Epiphone Frontier FT110, they all have the deeper body, which is mm. kind of similar mm. to a, a full depth dreadnought or jumbo as Gibson calls them which is a quarter inch deeper mm -hmm. than the um, Epiphone uh, slash J45 and, and um, your other Eastman the, over Yeah, here. the E3D. The E3D, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and Eastman, I just, I think, slipped that narrower body in. I, I'm guessing when they put the pickup in that guitar and made it a little bit more, uh, just a slightly different flavour of their traditional series guitar. Yeah, so we just wanted to film this because Chris and I were talking about this, but uh, Chris had this interesting theory, and he's, as you can see, with this style of bridge, uh, the holes are quite far back from the saddle, so you've got a relatively gentle brake angle on the low E, and it's getting gradually more gentle as it goes to the high E. So what were you going to say about yeah, that? Yeah, I was just saying, um, there's some luthiers in text, um, there's a video on YouTube, um, and they're saying slotting the, the, the bridge in front of the pins to increase the brake angle will get you more volume, but and, and I, I hear what they're saying, but my argument would be more volume isn't always a good thing. And um, the good thing about the, the belly bridge or the upside down bridge that Gibson and Epiphone uses is because you've got the pins straight across and you've got that long break angle, it's gentle on the high pins. So therefore you should have progressively less volume on the, on the mid, mids and highs when you're playing a guitar bridge or the upside down bridge that Gibson and Epiphone uses is because you've got the pins straight across and you've got that long break angle, it's gentle on the high pins. So therefore you should have progressively less volume on the, on the mid, mids and highs when you're playing your guitar. And I think that's more pleasant to the ear, at least for me personally. It's all subjective, 
But um, I don't bother ramping or slotting my pinholes anymore um, for that reason. And, and I like the belly bridge because I think it provides a nice balanced tone. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I'm certainly open to that idea as opposed to always just trying to get that savage break angle at, at, at all yeah, times, you know? Exactly. You don't need, yeah. you don't necessarily need maximum downforce. It's not a, a Formula One, it's a guitar, so. Yeah, that's right. And, and I guess the thing is, I, I think as I've got older, it's not a, um, it's not just a volume chasing all the time. And it, it is if you're thrashing like against an accordion or something, right? But, but if you're after tone and, you know, if you sit in front of the camera, um, the volume is not really what you're after. It's the, it's the tone of the guitar that's going to be captured. So yeah, and that balance is well. Some guitars you might you might want that maximum volume of bass and treble, mm. but you know sometimes that might get a little ear splitting. You might appreciate more balance, which is what I think you have going with the, the Gibsons upside down or belly yeah. bridge. Well, let's just have a quick comparison here with the E three D E, and it's actually um, yeah quite different because as you can see, the the pins are a lot closer to the saddle, and um and look the other thing is I'll tell you I have not ramped this. This has come from Eastman. And so they do that little bit of ramping out of the factory. And you can see it's a lot, a lot steeper angle. Um, I think they're, they are following the, the, the saddle's um, angle a tiny bit. Yeah. So you'll notice the um, high, the high, there's a little more distance than the low E. So they are, they are, there is a gentle slope following the slope of the saddle, but, but it's pretty similar. Like it's, it's almost straight. So you do have more, just a little bit more distance yeah. on the, um, on, on the high E side, but, but it is, yeah, that is savagely <laughs> steep break angle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which, which, yeah, but it's all subjective. Some people like a lot of volume and punch. And, yeah. And it's just a general point too, is that we just, um, I guess we both agree that we'd, it's really, you need to start looking at your saddle and this is really the engine room of the guitar where the volumes, you know, the, the vibrations getting channeled down into the body. So, um, you know, it's always good to look at this. Doesn't matter how expensive your guitar is. If this saddle is nice and it's, it's healthy, got a healthy height, um, you're going to get you know, your guitars in good shape because over time this is what will have to be lowered um, as you know in Sydney you know your, your, your humidity will, will, um, will lift the, the, the neck or of course you can go with um, with the bridge doctor which is going to yeah. lock everything in place that's right that's why I'm a fan of the particularly the pin style um, bridge doctor which has a, me a metal pin and what this means is you, you don't need to actually drill holes in anything it, it doesn't actually modify the guitar so if you decide to to reverse it for for a sale and you want to keep the guitar original you just remove that that metal pin um, it's fastened to the bridge doctor inside so you just reach your hand in there and, and there's something to unscrew um, and then and then you gently unscrew this side and you can yeah remove the whole thing and bridge doctor's gone and you can sell the guitar but what you'll find is five or ten years later this saddle will be pretty much where it is now instead of what will happen normally in Sydney climate is that'll have to go lower and lower and lower until it disappears into the slot. That's right, and uh, so yeah, guitars are, have become consumables down here in uh, in uh, wet Sydney. Yeah. And just actually another question, because I've often wondered, are these are these actual screws? Um, now that's a good question. In some of the old Gibsons, they were. You'd see if you looked inside with with an inspection mirror, you'd see the screws coming through the bridge. But in the case of this guitar, they're what's called locating pins, uh -huh. and the, the reason they do that is well, just like it says, so they know exactly where to put the bridge. It's so when they when they do the glue up and they clamp the bridge down, the locating pins just help the luthiers or technicians to uh, position the bridge correctly, and so it's not actually fastening inside the guitar. It's just the pin just positions the bridge when they're clamping and gluing, and then they've just put a bit of pearl inlay, presumably over that locating that pin. Thing. Right, okay, well, I didn't know that, so yeah, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, because obviously you've got the classic uh, Martin style bridge, obviously just glued on, right? And, um, yeah, so, but ultimately this is held on by glue as well, right? Okay, well, and the last thing I was going to say is, is the other little thing I always pick up is how high ultimately um, the combination of the saddle and the bridge together, how high is the string off the, off the guitar? Because I think, you know, going back to the way the old Martins were built, um, the higher that, that, that angle is, then, then the more you're going to deform the body of the guitar. And that's what happened yeah. with the old vintage guitars. They, 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 they're not stable structures because of that 200 pounds pressure. Yeah, so I, right. think, I think so to be, they, when they start to make them a bit more conservative, they, they lower this. So it just it's reducing the stresses on the guitar. So I'm just feeling my finger there. Yeah, I think, I think they're about the same. And, um, but I, I think when they get a bit a bit uh, conservative, that's the other place they will make that lower, and that also, of course, 
uh, pull the, put the uh, X brace further back, which is what Martin did, and probably make the bracing heavy. They're all the things they do to make the guitar more structurally sound, but of course you compromise with the tone. So it's a balancing act with these uh, it with is. this with these modern uh, flat top. It is, it, as I heard somebody jokingly say, it's a, it's, it's a balance so that your guitar doesn't implode on itself. Yes, that's right.